שלום, שלום. שבא שלום. שבא שלום, שבא שלום. שבא שלום, שבא שלום. Praise Yah to the twelve tribes of Yashorah and Israel that are scattered abroad throughout the, uh, the earth. Shabbat Shalom to you. For those who, are, who, who don't even know who you are yet, Shabbat Shalom to you. To the native born uh, as well, and, and, and to the Gathanian ones who desire to, to live for Yah and, and desires to, um, to live for Yah and desires to live to know Yah's people. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to you all as well. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. So today is part two um, of uh, the, uh, the, the part two of uh, the deceptive tactic tactics uh, of the adversary. So praise Yah for His goodness, praise Yah for His loving kindness. Hallelujah! Yah is our strength and our salvation, and praise Yah for that. And um, and, 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 and and it's part two of the deceptive tactic of the adversary. Now today we're gonna have um, uh, my son. My brother Isaiah as well uh, is going to teach with me. We're going to do teach together. Um, so he's going to be able to teach um, as, well as, as well as I am that we can be able to teach so, the, so that people can hear the word of Yah and it can change. You know, young and old. You know, so I have him up here because he's a young man and, and he can, you know, and, and he can identify with the young folk. You know, as well as you know, uh, me, did, I'm, I'm identified with everybody. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk to everybody. Praise y'all. So let's pray. We're gonna dive into the scriptures. Hallelujah. Almighty Yahweh, we thank you for your compassion, and we thank you, Almighty Yah, for your love and kindness and your mercy. Thank you for being our strength and our salvation. We ask you in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach today to please forgive us of all our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And we ask you, Almighty, that as your word goes forward. Again, that you will help us, give us wisdom, give us understanding. Help us to be able to speak your word with boldness and clarity. Let your word penetrate the hearts of those who hear your word. Let your anointing destroy every yoke and remove every burden. Let your Ruach HaKodesh convict of sin and lead and guide us into all truth. We need you and we thank you. We cannot make it without you, Almighty. So ask you to help us and keep us and teach us. In Yahushua HaMashiach's name we pray. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. So uh, again, Isaiah, Isaiah is going to um, today um, help me. We're going to, this, this is part two of the deceptive tactics of the adversary, and, the, and and my reason being for us to be able to um, teach this lesson again is because the adversary try he's deceptive. Yes. And he deceives people in so many ways. Oh, he gets you. He he, he he's cunning. As a matter of fact, the, the scripture said that he's going to see the whole world. Hmm. And in order for you not to be deceived, I believe that, you know, you got to know Yah's word. You have to. Or you're going to be looking like oops upside the head. And not, and not only looking like oops upside the head, but if we don't hang on to, 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 to faith, he going to give us. The scripture says this in Deuteronomy chapter number 8. It says that man shall not live by bread only or by bread alone, uh, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yah. That means that, 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 that we are to hang on to, cleave to, latch on to every word that proceeds out of the mouth with the understanding that the adversary is going to attack those very words. So the same words you hear, he going to hear. You just got to latch on to that word and not allow him to pull you from that and get you put in a place that's bad for you all because you lack faith and fail for his deceptive, deceptive tricks. Our foundation of scripture again that we're going to have today is Ephesians chapter number 6, verse 11, when it says to put on the full armor or put on the whole armor of Elohim or the full armor of Yah. Put on the whole armor of Elohim uh, uh, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the adversary or the wiles of the devil. And if you can't put on that full armor, you're gonna you 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 you're gonna be it's gonna be bad for you. Uh, we're gonna use some of these notes right here, but we're gonna as more, more so I probably maybe get rid of the PowerPoint and put the scripture up here so we can read the scriptures as well. But listen, the seat 
He's, he, he's deceitful. He can deceive, deceive you by uh, by uh, the, the, the Hebrew word for, for, for deceit is mirmal. Um, uh, uh, it, it means in the sense of deceiving, fraud, craft, deceit, false, fame, gal, suddenly, treachery. Or it, uh, and, and the word and, and the word uh, subtle as well is the Hebrew word arum, right? And, and, and Genesis three verse one says this. It says now the serpent was more subtle. He was more deceitful. He was more crafty. Uh, he was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahuwah Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, there it is, has Elohim said, You shall not eat of every tree in the garden? And that was the question. Go, 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 to, go, go to Genesis 2.16. And listen, that's not what y'all said. Hmm. That's not what y'all said. But that's the trick. That's the subtleness. That's the deceitfulness. It's to be it's, 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 it's to be able to get us, you know, and um and get us. Yah says this in Genesis 2, 16, and Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. Then what he said. Mm -hmm. Then he says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the adversary comes to Hava, even says, Did Yahuwah say? There's nothing in the tree in the garden. No. He didn't. But here's the, here, here's the thing. The adversary would take the word of Yah and try to play on it. And, he, and, he, and he'll only take the word of Yah to try to play on it to get you to fall. Mm -hmm. And what we got to do is be able to discern and have an understanding of when he's trying to deceive us. Because if not, he's going to get you. Yes. Yeah, he's going to get you. Yeah, you. I mean, anybody can be tough. You know, we all talk tough. You know what I'm saying? But we all fall too. The scripture says that all have sinned. And have fallen short you know, of the esteem or the glory of Yah. So, 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 uh, even in your tough talk, even in your big, your big, um, I got it by myself talk, all have fallen short. And so we need Yah's word in order for us not, not to continue to fall short. Yeah, for real. See, let me, let me tell you something. For example, then we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get on get on get on in the scripture. Just so now, for example, females and men, you know, teenagers especially. And then we're gonna let Isaiah get on because he's a young man. He's in college. You know, what I'm saying he's a senior this year. In, uh, senior, right? He's a senior this year in college. You know, what I'm saying. And, and, and so from, from from high school all the way even to college. Guess what? The the game ain't changed. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you live in Decatur, Alabama. Huntsville, Alabama, Decatur, Georgia, where you live in Brooklyn, New York, Denver, Colorado. The game ain't changed. The adversary is still the same adversary. And temptation and peer pressure is still real. Like, like, like again, like I was saying, these young people that they, 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 they go to school, these young females and these young men, you know, sometimes a lot of young men and a lot of, lot, a lot of young women, they don't, they don't know how to be single. They got to always have a boyfriend or always have a girlfriend. And so they put themselves through certain things because they don't know how to be single, you know. And so then they wind up falling, you know, wind up fornicating, having sex, you know, without being married. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden they have children. And young ladies get offended when you, when you, when you, when you 17, 18, 19, 20, you got five kids, you offended. And somebody say, hey, you got all those kids, you so young, you get offended, but you should have kept your legs closed. Because n nobody's mocking you because you have a lot of children at that age. But guess what? An older person that's 40 years old, 50 years old, see you with a lot of children, you know what I'm saying, at, at a young age like that, and you're not married, they're more concerned about you than, 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 than putting you down. And they're going to be more concerned about you. Why? Because you have children by yourself, and it's hard. It's not easy. I, I got four children that I raised, that I raised in my house. I have seven children total. I have financially supported every last one of my children. It is hard. Married or unmarried. So, you know, but a lot of times, you know, the, 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 the young woman gets deceived by the dude because she can't be single. She like him. 
He said all the right deceitful words to get her to fall, but she can't see the adversary and set a trap for her. And a lot of times, you know, young women tell, the, 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 sometimes the mother and the father tell the young women, hey, don't, 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 don't have sex out of wedlock or, you know, don't get married. I'm, excuse me, don't, don't fornicate because you can get STDs or you can get, you can get pregnant or, or this is going to happen. And then at that time, what happens is the, 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 the child gets offended and do it anyway. Or the young men, you know, who, who, who don't want to listen. Your head big, you, 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 you tough, you, 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 you gangster, but you have no understanding about the penitentiary. Because mm -hmm. you ain't never been there. And I'm going to tell you something off the top. See, I worked 10 years in corrections. And man, I know me in corrections, though I was a man, stood up for myself. Yeah, for real. I talk, I talk the way I talk, and guess what? It can, it can back it up because people know how I really live my life. And I'm bragging on myself because I fall just like you all fall. But I know how to seek y'all and, and ask you to help me to stand. But I'm being for real. So a lot of young men can't hear stuff being said to them sometimes. They want to be tough. But 20 years, 10 years, 15 years, 18 months is a long time in a penitentiary. And I've seen old penitentiary tricks well, 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 fear is something serious. Well, old school will well, slap a young boy so hard, put fear in, he'll make him grease his own self. So he want to holler about he being raped. They can say, he said, look at his fingernails, you know, look at the grease on he grease his own self. That's an old penitentiary trick. But guess what? It happens to the most gullible and naive young people who are rebellious because, first of all, you have no business being there anyway. But the adversary is cunning, he's crafty, he's deceptive, and it's time for us to stop being deceived by the adversary. It's time for us to wake up and to come to ourselves and begin to live a life that the Most High requires for us to live. It's time for us to learn the word of Yah so that we can start to overcome. Praise Yah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I was just talking to my brother about, you know, Giving in to the adversary because what he says does make sense to the flesh. So when the Messiah says he that has ears to hear, let him hear because you hear into what the Spirit is saying. And the adversary he plays with your emotions. That's why young men and women have kids. So many kids at very young ages. You know, it's equally stupid. It's equally brutish for a man or a young man to go to a girl and say you pretty, and that's that's your at oh your avenue to get in her pants. And it's equally stupid for her to believe those words that you're saying because she don't even know you don't know her. You don't know what these diseases you can contract. What we're looking for is a feeling from the flesh because it feels good to the flesh. We know what the flesh wants. As Galatians tells us, the flesh is looking for lasciviousness, murders, envyings, revelings. That's what the flesh is after. That's what the adversary wants you to play on. And the flesh does feel good, I can't lie. To look good in the mirror, that, that, that does feel good. That boosts your head. Sexual things do, do feel good. But we have to understand to get past those things, we have to have the spirit, we have to get past those things. Because right. if you just want to gratify the flesh, you will fail. Everybody that gratifies the flesh never succeeds, really. Because guess what? Meth heads gratify the flesh. They look terrible. Alcoholics gratify the flesh. They look terrible. No single mother, single fathers, they gratify the flesh and they look terrible. They don't have money like that. It's tough for them. The deceitfulness of the adversary, he will get you because guess what? When he talks to you, it does make a whole bunch of sense. But he told to Eve, he yeah. gave Eve gave in. She saw the tree pleasing to the eyes. The scriptures already tells that he's the most subtle creature. So when he comes to talk to you, it's gonna make sense. Well, you have to hear what's being said to you. You have to pay attention because guess what? The adversary knows the word. He came to the Messiah with the word. But what if the Messiah combat him with the word? Because the Messiah truly knew it. He believed it with his heart. We can't just know the word. Because demons, you know, they believe and they tremble. Is that all we going to do? We have to get past the believing and knowing. We have to truly live it. That's, how, that's why you can't be deceived if you, if you live it. That's why the Messiah says, take heed lest you be deceived. Yes. Taking heed is not just listening, it's doing what is being told to you. Yes. That's how you be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. That's why it's important to be a doer, not a hearer. Because guess what? We are all professional hearers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are all professional. We say, oh yeah, I love I love God, I love Jesus. But you still live in the doctrine, once saved, always saved, because you go out to the club. 
have fun because it seems fun. The next thing you know, you, you want to lose your mama, them depressed, and your father, them hurt, your siblings hurt, your aunties mm -hmm. and uncles, they hurt, your nieces and nieces and nephews hurt because you murdered, or you was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But you said you was a believer, or you've got a tattoo across your chest or across your thigh. And you live in a life as a homosexual. You talk about Christ. How dare you? That's a technique of the adversary. You know, because I can always say once saved, always saved, and go ahead and live my life and lose it. The adversary, guess what he do? He don't make sense when he talk. He's slick. Paul writes in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He's not going to come to you grueling at all. That's what Christianity has portrayed. That's what society has portrayed to you. The devil got horns and a, and a tail and a pitchfork. Going to try to stab you. That is not how he come. He come to you making a whole bunch of sense to your flesh. Man, kill this dude. He talked to you reckless. Slap this girl because the way she talking to you. Have sex with her because she do look good. Yeah, that's how he talked to you. But if you know the word, you can learn how to talk to him back and combat those things. We can't. We have to stop being deceived by the adversary and know the word of Yah for real and live the word of Yah because once you have it instilled and written on your heart, you can combat everything he says, even if it do make sense because guess what? The word of the Most High make more sense than the adversary every single time. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. That's, 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 that's true. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. For, uh, for what Isaiah just said, uh, this deceit, deceitfulness, the word, the word, the word deceit, the word deceit. Um, let's go back to it. So the uh, deception in the pictograph, we, uh, it, 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 it's a pictograph of a seed. The seed represents continuance. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have teeth, which, which, represent, which represents pressure. That's a picture in the picture graph Hebrew, and, 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 and combining them together, it means continual pressure. Uh, uh, in positions such as a death or deception, which causes oppression. So continual pressure causes you to be oppressed. And that's what the adversary puts on you. Mm -hmm. A continual pressure to get you to fall off track, to make you not do you know, what Yah calls you to do. Again, as I was saying, the just shall live by faith. Let, 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 let me show you all something. The just shall live by faith. And if, 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 if we can't, if we can't, you know, walk by faith, y'all, then we have nothing. Mm. Everything, er, everything done outside of faith is a sin. Right. And therefore, you have to live by faith. You know, many people don't understand that disease. So we're going to bring stuff out. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you something, though. Habakkuk, Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, or Habakkuk 2 and 4 says this. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up. It's not upright in him. Talk about prideful, a pride person, full of pride. But the just shall live by faith. And you can't you can't have a lifted up soul or a prideful soul and live by faith. The adversary is the one who walks in pride. Mm. It's the one who goes against Yah. It's the one who releases fear and, 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 and apprehension to cause us to be timid or dreadful to not obey Yah. It's time for us to begin to come out, come to ourselves. And wake up. Let me read yes. something to you all. Hallelujah. So we, we, we have a story in, 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 in the good news that Yahushua is talking about. And, 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 and it's the parable of the prodigal son. Let me show you something. So I can, I'm going to read this to you. And we, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to on a little bit. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me, give me the portion of goods that follow to me. And he divided unto them his living. Now, the, the younger son comes to the older son, to the father, and says, Father, give me the portion that belongs to me, that falls to me. The, what the younger son was doing, you all, was more so saying, you know, you dead. You dead to me. Because nobody can receive an inheritance while the father or the parent is still alive. The will goes into effect after the death. But he, cut, but he goes to his father and says, Father, give me, Give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided them unto, uh, unto them his living. His living. He gave to them his living. His older son and his youngest son, right? And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took a journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, 
and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, a Gentile. You know, uh, because because evidently Yahushua is teaching. He's talking to the Yahudim. He's only talking to Israelites. He only he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel first. Now, I'm not saying the one that's going to have salvation. I'm just setting the scene for you. He's talking to Israelites here. And what he's doing is talking to, he's talking about he went to a far country, a citizen of another country. He went to a Gentile, someone who didn't know Yah, who didn't have those teachings of Yah. That's rebellion. That's what he did. And, and, he, and he sent to him, and, and, and the man of the other country, and he sent him into his fields to feed unclean animals, to feed the swine. And he would fain, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. Right? And gave no man, and, and, and no man gave unto him. And when he had came to himself, when he did what? Came to himself, he said, How many high service of my fathers have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? Let's push pause. He was deceived. The young man was deceived. And the young man being deceived goes to his father. And say, give me what's mine. He, he, he think he read it. He think he got it. He goes to a far country and spent all of his substance in righteous living. He was reckless. He lived reckless. And he tied himself to a Gentile master, and the man gave him a job to go eat the swine. The man had gotten so low, nobody would give to him. And let me explain something to you. That's how the adversary does to us. He'll get you in a point to, to make you so low, and he will cause other people to turn their backs on you. He would call strangers to turn their backs on you. The, 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 the very same ones who you think got your back, the very same ones who you think are your friends, all because you rebelled in your mind against y'all. That's an incentive tech of the adversary. We have to understand, like who told Peter, he said, Simon, look, behold, the adversary, Satan, desires to have you or you people and to sift you with sweet. He want to kill your life. And he's going to come to you any way he can come to you and make things sound good to you in order to kill you. Mm -hmm. He want to ruin you. What makes you think the devil loves you or care about you? I was just reading before we did this message, and I was going uh, 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 earlier, uh, that there was a, another murder a couple of hours ago in my city. So far, one day, three of them been shot injured. What's going on? Because the adversary is deceiving us. Taking us out of here. I, I cause us to kill one another. Causing us not, not to love each other. Causing us to sin against y'all. And causing us not to walk by faith. He want to deceive you. What, what, what do I mean? He's doing everything. He, he, he's coming. And he's attacking the very word of Yah. And he knows that nobody is really trying to pick up Yah's word. Mm -hmm. Hebrew. He says, you know what? I'm your who, your Elohim. I'm the one that brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And we say, you know what? I'm a man. I'm a woman. I brought myself up. I got it out the mud. I pulled my own self from my own bootstraps. You didn't do it on your own. You are where you are because of the mercy of Yah. You are where you are because Yah had enough mercy to bring you out of the darkness into the light, even in your time when you was ignorant. He tell you, you should have no other Elohim before me, no other mighty ones before me. But what we do is put up Jesus Christ, the, the white man, instead of the true uh, Messiah of the Bible. Or we put up a Baptist, or we put up a Methodist, Church of God in Christ. All this religion, they can't get your life changed. Right. You know how many people in the Christian church, how many divorces happen in the Christian church? Do you know how many uh, 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 women or uh, uh, young girls are pregnant? Teenage pregnancy in the Christian church. And all of a sudden we love the most high. Or we so-called love God. The adversary is deceiving you. He telling us not to have any other graven images. Or any, or, or any likeness. Or anything that's in the heaven above. Or in the earth beneath. Or the water below. We got a fish symbol. We got a big old fish We got a cr for the water. We got a big old cross for the earth. And a dove with a leaf in his mouth. For the hot for the sky. And we so, so blind. But we can't see our own error, and we think that represents the most high with Exodus 20 and also Deuteronomy 4, 5, and 6 warns us against these things. Why? Because the adversary is deceiving us. He's trying to get the flesh, and we should wake up. He said, don't bow yourself down to him. But one thing, that, that one thing about Israel is this, that, 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 that we're so hard-headed. 
that we don't listen, the scripture says, Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not rasach. Thou shalt not murder. Not just kill. You kill uh, 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 rabbits. You kill, you know what I'm saying, uh, a deer. You kill your know, animals to hunt. Killing an animal to hunt ain't the same thing as killing a man. Killing a man is a murder. But we, but, we, but we quick to pull them pistols out and shoot because we mad. Gang, gang. Yeah. We're going to throw a folk, blood, crip, bison lower signs. We tough. We won't have no remorse. But we can't handle this punishment when that judge gives you a life without sentence at the age of 21 years old. Or 99 years to 40 years at 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old because you can't watch yourself. You want to shoot somebody. Are we quick to be mad at somebody because, you know, we got pregnant as young, men, young women and then all of a sudden it's hard for us? Are we angry for young men because we're on child support? We may not have baby's mama. You know, we, we, we got everybody to blame. We want to put our fingers to everybody else, but none of us want to be accountable. Mm -hmm. That's what I call the deceptive tactics of the adversary. Because when you refuse and fail to be accountable for your own actions, there is no repentance. There's no remorse. There's no change of your heart. You're just mad because you don't like what you're going through with the refusal to understand you are the one who put yourself through it. You hate to, to take the responsibility to know that you look like your own decision. You want to blame somebody else for your state of being. The devil trying to kill us, y'all. He is trying to take us out. And it's time for us to really repent and to walk by faith and really begin to live a life that's pleasing to the most high y'all. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, speaking of anger, anger, um, I was reading 4th Maccabees last night. <clears throat> and the reason I was reading in it is because this past week uh, I had a friend. If you're watching this, you know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> you, you got angry enough over a jacket to talk about you're going to get your gun. You even cocked it. I had to close the door on you. You're going to ruin your life over a jacket? You don't know if the dude had a gun in his in pocket or what? But we allowed our emotions to cloud our sound judgment. The foolishness of the adversary is to impulse. The wisdom of Yah is reasoning. The Most High wants us to receive his wisdom to be able to reason. Eve did not reason properly. Samson did not reason properly. David did not reason properly. Neither did Moshe. That's why he fell short. He allowed his emotions to get overcome him. That's not what the Most High wants of us. He wants us to be able to reason. I was reading the fourth Maccabees. It talks about, you know, wrath has the same exact pleasure as lust. Mm. It, says, it says that. So that's, that's not a good thing because it, it said when it comes upon you. And that's true. Because when we get so angry, we justify ourselves. I had to kill him because I was so angry. But then when you sit back and think, hindsight is always 20-20. It's like, man, I didn't have to kill that person. But when it's on you, it feels so good to do it because you're angry. Cain, he killed his brother because it felt good in the moment when the most I came and reasoned with him. You can you can rule over this. Right. The most I told him that, but in his wrath and his anger, he wanted to kill him. That's why James writes, be slow to speak. It's slow to anger because the wrath of man works not the righteousness of Yah. Because guess what? The wrath of man, you'll kill anybody. you do anything. People have killed their brothers. People have killed their spouses. People have killed their best friends, supposedly friends. Girlfriends, what well, all that has happened because we don't know how to reason. The adversary makes it seem so plausible to you in your flesh. That's why the scripture says, be angry and sin not the most. I know you're gonna be angry. He gets angry. He's made you're made in his likeness, but sin not. Don't go against the Torah in your anger. People have cheated on their spouse because of anger. They made me so angry I cheated on them. They made me so angry I just punched them in their face. What? That seems plausible to you. When you say that loud, it sounds much more it's dumb. It sounds so stupid. That's how you know it's from the adversary. But when it's in your mind, when you don't speak it out, guess what? It sounds so plausible that you actually act on it. Because anger, guess what? It does feel right in your passions. But you have to learn how to reason. Take control of your emotions. It's not a saying for no reason. It's the same for a reason. Because if you don't take control over your emotions, you will have plenty of baby daddies, plenty of baby mamas, plenty of bodies. You know, that's wrecked up in your anger. You know, people don't want to be your friend because you don't know how to take control of your emotions. Nobody wants to be a, a close friend to an emotional person. 
that gets tiring. That gets very irritating. Guess what? And we, if we're made in his likeness, guess who else get tired of it? The most high. He don't care about your emotions when it comes to his word. Forget that. He told Moshe he couldn't come to the land because of his emotions. So how do you think we should feel know how to humble ourselves? David and his emotions, he killed a man. The most high was very wroth with him. Saul and his emotions sacrificed when the prophet wasn't there. The most high repented the day he made Saul king. So who cares about emotions? The most high don't care about your emotions no more. It doesn't matter. Because if, if it was all based off emotions, the most I would have killed Yasharel in the desert, remember? Mm -hmm. You know, you said you were Israelite, you're supposed to be in red dead. He, worked at, he didn't work in his emotions, he learned how to reason. But he learned how to listen to reason. Because what did Moshe tell him? In the most high, he humbled himself. He came to, it came to his remembrance. Mm -hmm. If you really want to be made in his likeness, do what he do. Right. Learn how to humble yourselves even in the midst of your anger. When you, learn how to take correction. Because guess what? Kids have to learn how to take correction. And they, your parents say something, even when you're angry, it do, it, yeah, they may be wrong. Learn how to shh. The most high will convict their heart. Why? Because if he came to Cain, the first murderer, he will come to your mama and your daddy when they wrong. When he came to Nebuchadnezzar, real pride, before he, before he destroyed him, or excuse me, before he abased him, what did he do? Warning. It came to his mind, it came to his heart, that even when he did slip out and get proper, that, that word came right back to him, and he right. lost his mind in that moment. So anger, you have to learn how to subside that with the reasoning. Learn how to trust the most. I have faith. Wow. If you subside your anger, guess what? He'll give you that relief. Throw some ice at the wall if need be. That's right. not saying you just throw ice at the wall. Just don't break the Torah in your anger. Right. right. Hallelujah. Uh, God's fifth chapter says this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. The Torah is not against these things. For so long, religion has, 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 has lied to us and told us, you know, you, that, about suffering. That you're that you always suffering. When the Scripture says long-suffering is a fruit of the Spirit. Mm. Well, it talks about, you know, uh, patience. You know, you got so many folks who do not like to pray, you know, um, for patience. They, they, I've I heard so many people say, you know, mm. but don't pray for patience. You know, so and my question is, why, why, why would the Most High tell you that some of the fruit of the Spirit, and then then tell you you don't pay uh, pray for it? You know, because you're gonna go through trials. Let me give you some understanding about something. You're gonna go through trials, whether you pray for patience or not. You know, whether whether you know who you are or not, whether you are Israelite or you are Gentile, you're gonna go through trials. You know what I'm saying? What, so so don't be deceived. By the adversary, you know, um, pe people always, you know, try try to see, and, and we still have on people that many many of us think to love somebody is being weak. Well, that 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 that, that 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 that's true strength. The hard part is getting alone. The easy part is fighting. You strong if you can learn how to reason within yourself and learn how to have a mature conversation to resolve issues. Especially if we say we're Israel and the word chosen in the Torah. Don't bear a grudge, but rather love your neighbor as yourself. But we all walk around bearing grudges because we don't like some somebody said. We don't like how they look. Or we, we split up and walk away and, 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 and disperse so much. But the greatest commandment is to love. What's wrong with y'all? Grow up. We still over here doing the same thing in the diaspora that we did, you know, at home. And we told you we want to, you know, go home. Well, the first thing we need to stop doing, you all, is stop allowing the adversary to deceive us right. and learn how to love one another. Quit walking around with your lip poked out because you're having a tough time in life and have some joy. Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, the joy of Hawaii is your strength. See, to, 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 to walk around with your lip poked out and being down is a person who lacks faith. Why? Because you 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 concerned about what you dealing with, what you got going on, and that stuff make you leave y'all know. Trust y'all. Trust him. It's just like in our, our mothers and our fathers. If we had um a bill to pay, if I had a bill that I need to pay, I, and I call my mama, and, 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 and today is today's a Monday, and I gotta have that bill, and she tell me, "Well, son, I can't give you the money until next Monday." With confidence, I'm gonna call that bill collector, whoever, say, "Hey, I'm gonna pay you next Monday." And I'm going to be patient and wait. Why? Because my mama told me she got me next Monday. And then, and then you know what? I would be offended if, you know what I'm saying, the person would work with me. Why? Because I'm telling you I'm going to have the money. I'll be offended. Well, guess what? In the, in the spiritual thing, if y'all tells you he's going to provide for you, you trust in that. You be patient with that. And when the adversary try to talk to you, you would be offended and you rebuke the adversary. 
because my father told me, you know, I can make it. And then you have that joy. Then you be able to have that peace. Then you be able to have that gentleness and, 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 and that goodness and that faith or faithfulness. And you'll be temperate and have meekness. See, the adversary is trying to deceive us, y'all. And it's time for us to wake up. I know that in our listening time, Pat, we talked about Samson. We talked, we talked about Delilah and Samson. We talked about Eve and Adam. But you, you, you have many other folks in the scripture. But guess what? We have today's time contemporary examples. Some of y'all that's listening, and even myself, that we know that, that there's decisions that we should have made in the time past, and because we made the bad decisions, you know what I'm saying, we fail. We, we fall, and, 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 and it takes a while to get back up. Aren't you tired? You should be sick and tired of being sick and tired. You should be sick and tired of running. You should be sick, you should be sick and tired of being defeated. You should be sick and tired of religion. Have you not learned by now that someone money don't get you no money? Going to the altar and putting twenty dollars on the altar don't get you nothing. It don't get you blessed because you give somebody the, the church no money. Invest in the people. Give your time. Bless the homeless. Bless, bless, bless the, um, the, uh, the, the 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 widows and the orphans. But what's going to get but what's going to get you blessed and get you in y'all's favor is your obedience. Yeah. Is you walking by faith? You can't be just deceived by the adversary because you don't like what's going on in your life. You got to learn how to still have this joy, still have this temperance, still have this meekness, and trust y'all. But what we do is, y'all, when we don't like what's going on, we try other results. We work the flesh. My son just talked about adultery and fornication, being unclean and lasciviousness, idolatry and witchcraft and hatred and various emulations and wrath and strife and seditions and heresies. And how these things come out of flesh, envies and murders and drunkenness and revelings and such like. And listen, most of these things come from something. Mm. Most of these things mm. spring from a source. Mm -hmm. Spring from something that was never nipped in the bud, that was never cut off from the beginning. Why? Because we please the flesh by giving in to something. By adhering to the continual pressure. The, the, listen to the adversary instead of speaking out against the adversary when he tries to deceive us. No, it's time for us to grow up. I know today ain't gonna be all hoop to do, look a lot message. It's a real life message. We should be concerned about what's going on in our communities. We should be concerned about what's going on with our people. We should be concerned about the, the, the crime rate, the murder rate, the poverty rate. Everybody don't know how to make it, and but ain't nobody crying to y'all. We crying to the um CCC, and we crying to the, the Catholic concerned people, and we crying to, the, to, the, to these other places to help, help us pay our utility bill, help us pay our phone bills, or to help us, you know what I'm saying, pay other bills, or, we, or, or, or we're so arrogant and steely, we say, I'm a boss, you know what I'm saying, I got it, I got it out the mud, you walk around trying to show your big booty on, on, on the camera woman, with your legs to the side, with your whole booty poked out, with your leather suit on, but your family still in poverty, some folks still struggling because you the boss, well then boss mm. provide, <laughs> some folks, somebody else, mm. well boss provide jobs to him, help other folks get to where you got to get to, learn how to invest in other people, instead of letting yourself continue to be deceived by the adversary, and seeing other folks suffer, mm. it breaks my heart to look at news of folks killing people, the poverty rate, the children, you know what I'm saying, going through struggling, all because, you know, we are allowing the adversary to deceive us. How about it's time for us to start allowing Yah's Ruach to help us to discern so we can mm. learn better, mm. do better, know better, to help others and to please Yah. The scripture says that without faith, it's impossible to please Yah. Let me say it like this right here then. With disobey or, or by disobedience, it's impossible to please y'all. Because everything done outside of faith is a sin. It's disobedience. So when you live in contrary to the word of y'all and you're disobeying y'all, but not adhering to his word, then you're not pleasing y'all. It don't matter how many tears you want to shed. It don't matter how much you want to fall in the flow and you want to slob and have snack coming out at your, at your nose and you want to shout and run and, and put all that money you know, on the altar because you want to just be blessed. If you're not walking in a righteous lifestyle, adhering to the Torah, keeping y'all <laughs> speech days, obeying y all, y all the commandments, then guess what? You still are being deceived by the adversary. And it's time for us to wake up, come out of our stupor, and turn back to y'all. 
from our sins. So with that being said, you all, I'm, I'm done for the day. Praise y'all. I'm going to go ahead and let Isaiah finish teaching y'all because he got he has a word for y'all and the most high want to speak through him. So we're going to let him teach. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. <laughs> Praise the most high. Um, also, Israel, you know, we we do know we Israel. It's a good thing to know that we are Yasharel. That's not a bad thing. It's good to know your heritage. But we it has to come to a point where we have to get past knowing our heritage. Our forefathers knew their heritage. And guess what? We in captivity today because all they knew was their heritage. They didn't want to listen to the, the word of the most high. They didn't want to get the rule of Hakodesh. They they crucified the Messiah because he was speaking true words of life. They wanted to, they wanted death. Because look, we still in captivity because of their decision making. We cannot continue to do what our ancestors did. Repenting from the ways of our ancestors is living by the Spirit. Turning away from what they did because all they did was gratify the flesh. What the Messiah tell they brought in their phylacteries. They trying to look good. He told them they look like whitewashed tombs. Because it's all about the outer appearance. It's all about being Yasharel. That don't mean nothing. Because if it meant some, why not? Why did a lot of our forefathers go in, you know, captivity? It has to come to a point where we have to get past that. The adversary has deceived us because that's all we seem to talk about. We look just like the Christian church. You know, become a Christian. Oh, I'm an Israelite. We the same. <laughs> what about the Ruach HaKodesh that we need to be filled with? What about being a true witness of the Most High? We can't be a witness just knowing we Israel. Many of Israel are going to die because they're they not, they not listening, because they don't have the spirit. Many of Israel Israelites, whether you are in the truth now, it's a, it has to be a falling away. Mm. How do you fall away? Because you don't have the Ruach HaKodesh. And I'm not trying to fall away. What do we need to be walking by? The spirit. Yeah. What do Romans 8 tell us? Those who are led by the spirit of Yah are the sons of Yah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, let's read it. Romans 8. You know, we're going to start at verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Mashiach Yahusha, who walk not after the spirit, but after the flesh. The only way that you are condemned is if you walk after the flesh, if you're still doing the things of the flesh, if you commit idolatry, if you commit witchcraft, if you're still killing, if you commit lasciviousness, if you fornicate, you're still condemned because you're not walking after the spirit. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Mashiach Yahushua, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So there is no condemnation to those who are after the spirit. We have to be living by the spirit in order to not be condemned. For the, for the Torah of the spirit of life in Mashiach has made me free from the Torah of sin and death. The Torah of sin and death is, you have to be working in the flesh to be walking by that Torah. But to be working in the Torah of the spirit of life, you have, excuse me, for the, in the in Mashiach, you have to have the spirit on you, the spirit of life. And obviously, that's the word of Yah. Verse 3 says, for what the law could not do, the law of spirit of death could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. Yah sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the Torah might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after what? The spirit. So it does not matter if we say that we're Israelites pertaining to the flesh. That don't mean nothing. What did Paul also write? They are Hebrew? So am I. Why? Because it amounts to nothing at the end of the day. If you don't live right. If you don't live right. You, they, you got to bounce check. Yeah, it can say 100000 only, but you take it to the bank, it's going to bounce if you don't have the spirit. The riches that you have accrued in Shamayim, you can't, it's not really accrued because you're not really living after the spirit. So they cannot be. You have to walk, you have, to, to, to walk in righteousness, you have to walk after the spirit. Hallelujah. The scriptures and Proverbs tells us to seek after wisdom. That's how we should be seeking the Ruach HaKodesh as well. The Ruach HaKodesh is the spirit of Yah. That's how we should be seeking Yah. We should be seeking after that, not the things of the flesh. Yah has this wisdom, and guess what? The adversary is coming with deceitfulness that seems so plausible. That's what propaganda is. You know, people hate a whole bunch of our people. Because they've had propaganda, it sounds so right. I'm going to hate this black person because they skin black. It don't look like mine. I'm going to call them a nigga because that's what they look like. That's, it makes sense. You know, even our people. I'm going to call them home because what they did. It makes sense. It do make sense. It make a whole lot of sense because when you look at the situations, guess what? Well, guess what God has? He has mercy. Hallelujah. 
So that's how we have to be merciful. We have to look at, we have to look past the flesh. Because once we look past the flesh, then we can see, oh, hold on, the adversary has deceived me. You know, even homosexuality, that's a deceit. You're deceiving yourself. That's a choice that you make in your mind because guess what? I was molested at a young age. Those thoughts entered my heart. And I saw a whole bunch of things on Instagram said I couldn't pray the gay away. There was an adversary coming after me at a young age in high school. I remember that. I wouldn't even touch a gay dude's phone because I thought it would jump on me. The adversary had my mind so deceived, so I'm believing that. They call you homophobic. I'm not scared of no homosexual. I know you're wrong. That's an abomination you're going against the most. But what am I scared of you for? The adversary really, it's, that's why you have to be renewed and the, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because you're not transformed by the renewing of your mind. You're going to keep falling to the same old cycle. You're going to be able to be pushed back into the bubble and talk yourself into doing it. Because it sounds plausible to, get to, to the carnal mind. It does. And I'm a witness because guess what? Homosexuality sounded plausible to me. Especially with the propaganda they have on TV. It sounds so plausible. It looks good. It looks plausible. It makes sense. But when you look back, I'm like, hold on. The most I is who we say is, I can pray this, these thoughts away. And the adversary combat me. I'm hearing a whole bunch of some dude that say he raised a Christian. Katy Perry even said she couldn't pray the gay away and she was a Christian. So I'm thinking, goodness. Yeah, I can, oh, what's going to happen to me? Guess what? I'm not a homosexual. I, not, I refuse to be deceived by the adversary. Even if it did sound plausible because the word of God is still true. That's what's plausible to me. And we have to live by that. We have to be led by the spirit of Yah. Because if you're not led by the spirit of Yah, you are going to fall in the flesh. You can turn to a homosexual because that's what you're thinking. You're not born that way. No. It's a choice that you make. You're not born a murderer. You can't be. How can some so precious from you born, be born sinful? You're born, you're born shooting people in the head? You're born having homosexual sex? No, you're not. You're born pure. But your experience is enlightened what the adversary teaches. Yeah, it makes a whole bunch of sense because that's, they say you're born that way. That's a lie from the pit of the hell, of, from the adversary, from his mouth. Hallelujah. That is a lie. And it does sound plausible to the flesh. But when the most I, when you truly have the rule of Hako, that's the most I will let you know. No, that's a lie from the adversary. You do not have to believe that. That's a lie that your flesh wants to be gratified. That's a lie. You don't have to get that, that feeling of ejaculation off. I just gotta say it. I can't say no what. Can't truth. say it. No, no other way. You just want to get that feeling of you know or, an orgasm. That's a lie from the adversary. Do it right. I guess I guarantee it'll be a better feeling. Y'all trying to portray something that you're not. That's a lie from the adversary. You know he transforms himself to an angel of light for a reason. He wants to make it make it look good. That's why it seems plausible. Because guess how he's coming to you? He's coming with the soft words. He's coming like a pimp, real slick, real good. This is how I do it. Yeah, just do it right here. You can repent from it later. But then when you do it, you don't want to repent. It, feel, it felt right to gratify the flesh. I know for a fact. Because I, you know, slipped up with some females. Because it made sense to my mind. Oh, man, I'm not gay. I'm finna go have sex with this girl because I'm not gay. Talk myself into doing it because the heart deceived me. So we cannot, we cannot continue to be deceived by y'all. I mean, excuse me, by the adversary. We cannot. Yeah. Yeah. You have to walk after the spirit of the oh, Most High yeah. to be called his son. How do you think the Messiah was obedient unto death? Because he walked after his spirit. He was able to do it. He denied the adversary because and even in Matthew chapter 4, we're going to get back to Romans 8, even in Matthew chapter 4, the things that came you know, to the Messiah, it did, it did make sense because he hungry. His mind talk, it's getting to him. The adversary coming to him with the things that Seems so plausible in the moment. So we're going to start at verse 1. It says, Then was Yahushua led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the adversary, of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. I fasted for a day before. I fasted for three days straight. It's terrible. So imagine 40 <laughs> days. It feel like your, your stomach is eating your back. I know how I feel. Your knees weak. You feel terrible. It's not a good mm -hmm. sensation. It says, and when he and when the tempter came to him, he said, if you be the son of Yah, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yah. It was in his heart. He really wanted to be led by the walk of Yah for real. So he was able to say that regardless of the situation he had. I know his stomach was hurting. 
three days of fasting. If I was hungry, I know 40 days and 40 nights, I know he was starving. Some probably regret he feeling sick, feeling weak. You know, don't don't feel too good. It sounds plausible to him. Make this stone bread. Make it bread and eat it. It's true. You the son of the most high. You the son of the author of creation. I mean, you can just tell the stone. It sounds plausible. But what, what do you have to respond with? How the Messiah responded? As it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yah. That's how you have to talk back to the adversary because guess what? This makes sense, a hundred percent sense as well. But this makes sense to the ruach to your spirit. That's what it's making sense to. That's how we have to walk. Verse five it says, "Then the devil takes him up into the set apart city, and sets him on the pinnacle of the temple, and says unto him, If you be the son of Yah, cast yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee." And in their hands, they shall bear thee up, lest at any, any time you dash your foot against a stone. But Yahushua said unto him, It is written again, You shall not tempt Yahuwah with thy Elohim, or thy Eloheka. Because guess what? It probably did make sense. Talk about this. We're going to see what the angels do. We're going to see what the Malak do. I mean, you know, he said he's going to save you. He ain't going to let you dash your foot against a stone. It do make sense because he come with the word too. You know? Hey, but he twisted out of context. Look what he did to Eve. He's trying to make it seem plausible to you. It's nothing new under the sun. The adversary comes with the things that make that seem that seem to be righteous, but he's not really righteous. He's gonna twist it out of context on purpose. But trying to make it make sense to you. And sometimes, guess what? It makes sense if you're not listening to him. How do you think you got these Christian pastors deceiving or even Muslim people deceiving because they black in the nation of Islam? It make a whole bunch of sense. Or even comedic people, it makes sense because they look your skin color. But that's the tactic of the adversary. Ooh, they black. I might as well join them. Shoot, that's nice. I want to feel welcome. But guess what? You committed idolatry against the most high just because it looked nice. Want to gratify the flesh? Deceit. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, it says, Again, the devil takes him up into a an high and exceeding mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the esteem of them. It says unto, unto him, All these things will I give thee, and if you will fall down and worship me. Then saith Yahushua unto him, Get thee hence, Shatan, for it is written, You shall worship Yahuwah thy Elohim, and serve him only shall you serve, and him only shall you serve. He responds to him and told him to get, get from here, as it is written. That's how we need to respond to the adversary. Get from here! Because yes. it's going gonna, it's gonna to try to make sense. Yes. Because, watch this. It says, again, he takes him to a high and exceeding mountain, shows him all the kings of the world. In Daniel chapter 7, it was already promised to the son that was coming. So the, the Mashiach already knew what was his. The Most High gave it to him. So the adversary was already coming with malarkey. So get from me. I already know what my father promised me. The adversary, he's going to come. I got a whole bunch of prayers I prayed to the Most High. Mm -hmm. And I prayed to him in faith. And guess what? The adversary even tried to tempt me about my family. And my heart got a little wavery. I, it did. But I had to still learn how to speak out against it. Because the scriptures say, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahuwah thy Elohim gives thee. And if you honor your mother and your father, your, mm -hmm. the most I'm going to keep his promise. As Paul wrote, that's the first commandment with promise. So you bleed that with your whole heart, the most I will give it to you and your family and the ones that come after you. But the adversary going to come and talk, well, what if they die in a car crash? All that do come in my mind. And guess what? Sometimes it do make sense. It do make sense to my flesh and start trying to worry you. But that's a continual pressure that the adversary comes with that we have to pay attention to. Yes. The, the continual pressure, even with Jezebel and Elijah. The continual pressure. Oh, okay. By this time next tomorrow, I'll make sure you like the prophets that you killed. He ran away. Because it makes sense. But the most I had to show him, hold on, I'm L. He made an earthquake happen and none else was broken. He made a whole bunch of things happen. It blew his mind. So what could Jezebel do? Mm -hmm. She can't do nothing. The, the most I can raise him up. If, if John told the Pharisees that the most I can raise stones, mm -hmm. make sons of Abraham from these stones, guess what? Jezebel ain't nothing. The adversary yeah. really not nothing yeah. at all. Hallelujah. That's why it's going to be revealed to us. Dang, this who deceived us? This who deceived the whole world. Mm -hmm. This little thing right here. We have to truly believe the word of the most high because the adversary he is lurking. He's prowling like a roaring lion after seeking whomever he may devour. And guess what? He's going to devour some of y'all because y'all don't want to listen. Ooh. Back to Romans 8. It says, uh, for to be carnally minded, 
verse, uh, starting at verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yah, for it is not subject to the Torah of Yah, neither indeed can be. So let's look at verse 5, uh, five through eight, uh, 7 again. Thank you. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. We just read some of the things after the flesh, lasciviousness, murders, even boasting in yourself, boasting that you Yasharel. Because you mind the things after the flesh, you mind your ZZs, but a whole bunch of devils got ZZs on. Mm. Mm. For they for they that mind the things after the flesh, oh, excuse me, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yah, for it is not subject to the law of Yah, neither mm. indeed can be. Why? Who is, the, who is the God of flesh? The adversary. He's the God of this world. Ain't nothing in this world but the pride of life. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's all that's in this world. That's, guess what? That's all pertaining to the flesh. So we cannot follow the old the old man. Because if you follow the old man, you follow in the Hasatan. It's only two things on the planet to follow. The most high or the adversary. I don't care, I don't care if it's Islam, Christianity, Buddhist, Hindu is still at the adversary. He disguises himself as an angel of light. Do not be right, deceived right, by him. Right, right. It says, so then, they, that are, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yah. Why can't you please Yah? Because you don't have his spirit on you. You don't have nothing that looks like him on you. You can't please, you can't please nobody. That I couldn't really please my dad if I look like somebody. Caucasian officer, I'm your son. You don't look at me like, what? Who? <laughs> you are not Isaiah Battle. You can't be because you don't look nothing like me. Talk about <laughs> Because one, I know my dad. I know he's not just finna just take that. The most like I wish you know the most. He's not just finna take that. Oh, most high, I do have your spirit, but yeah, you still murdering people in the secret. You still fornicating. It's just that simple. So how can you praise the most high, but still fornicate and sin against him willingly, intentionally? Why do you think he it repented him that he made Saul king? Because he's talking about, oh, I'm king of Yashareb, but you still disobeying me. You didn't even kill Amalek, the king of the Amalekites, like I told you to do. But yeah, you want to say you my son? Ain't no way. Verse 9 says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of Yah dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Mashiach, he is none of his. If you don't have his spirit, you are none of his. You are still condemned. Because you don't look anything like him. Sons should look like their fathers. Yes. Why do you think they had those DNA tests? People be offended when, dang, you cheated on me. Because <laughs> sons should look like their fathers. Whether male man or female man, you should look like who your father is. Mm -hmm. You should look like you have some home training from the most high. Yes. Verse 10, and if, if Mashiach be in you, the body is dead because of sin. The flesh is dead if Mashiach... If the spirit of Mashiach is in you, you're not going to fulfill those things of the flesh. Even if it does try to make sense, you can combat that. But the spirit, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahushua from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Yahushua from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Another word for shall, you will die. You will. But if you, through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you will live. Now, and we live in to live again. You will live on this earth and you will live in the kingdom of Yah because you are his son. And not deceived by the adversary. For as many are, as are led by the spirit of Yah, they are the sons of Yah. So do not be deceived by people just claiming that they Israelites. <laughs> Don't be deceived by people who, who know how to talk real well, just loud. Because that's how the adversary is coming to you. He wants you to look at the things after the flesh. He wants you to mortify. Or he wants you to be pleased in the flesh. So we cannot continue to be deceived by the adversary. Right. We have to be truly living by the Ruach HaKodesh. 
That's how you are the son of Yah. That's how you cannot be deceived. That's how you truly win. That's how you beat the deceptive tactics of the adversary. And I'm glad we're talking about this because I'm, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't talk about the adversary. We don't know our enemy. That's why we still be getting beat up. Because we still deceive. We don't understand that it's continual pressure. We think we insane in our mind. That's not true. It's the adversary. That's your heart. They're trying to deceive you. Don't give in. Don't follow your heart. Don't give in to that. Speaking of the heart, Jeremiah 17 talks about the heart. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The things that enter into your the, those quote-unquote intrusive thoughts that people talk about in psychology? No, that's the adversary of your heart thinking these things. Why? Because what, what is the tree that Adam and Eve ate from? The tree of knowledge of good and evil. So those thoughts that came, everybody has those thoughts. You're not crazy. It's the adversary of your heart trying to deceive you. Don't believe that stuff. Because if you believe it, and you're going to make those choices. And that's why verse 10 says, I, Yahuwah, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit mm -hmm. of his doings. Not the fruit of his thoughts, the fruit of his doings. Yeah. Because if you act on those thoughts, that's when you sin. If you think about breaking Torah and you break Torah, that's when you have transgressed. Because, yes, those thoughts do enter into your mind. Why do I say that? Look what happened to David. Those thoughts about getting Bathsheba and killing Uriah into his mind. Did he have to do it? Nope. He did not have to do it, but his deceitful heart swayed him to do it. It made sense to him. Did Judas have to betray the Messiah? Nope. But the money looked good, but it made a whole bunch of sense because the Pharisees wanted to destroy him. Tell the truth. Did our ancestors have to say, oh, put the blood on our hands and our children's hands? Did they have to? Nope, but it made sense because they wanted this man dead. The things that make sense to the carnal mind should not make sense to the spirit. We know that they lusted after one another, so we know that combatant, we should, we, we're not confused at this point. If we say we really in the word, we shouldn't be confused. You know what the words say. You know they lusted against one another and they combating. So don't be deceived. Allow the war hakodes to beat that deception. Yes. Because the Most High will not. He doesn't want you to be deceived. Hallelujah. As in the as scriptures, take heed lest you be deceived. Right. I would not have you deceived, my brethren. Hallelujah. Why? Why would they be saying this? Yet we still deceive. Did they write this in vain? Did the Messiah say what he said in vain? No, nope, he surely did not. There is going to be a fall away. How are people are going to fall away? Because they're going to give it to the adversary's deceptions. You know, Paul even warns us in 2 Thessalonians that he's coming with all power and lying wonders. There's nothing new. On, they, they're going to be coming with lying power, all power and lying wonders. It's going to look good. It's going to make sense. It's going to look fascinating. But don't believe that. It's going to look fascinating to the flesh. I've just got to be honest. It is. Because why do I say that? We got Marvel making movies, and the Spider-Man movie look real fascinating. It do look cool. Video games look real fascinating. Princesses, that stuff look fascinating. That's how the adversary, he wants to get you with the things that you like. He wants to get you with the fascination. You know, Samson, he was fascinated by Delilah. Even when she said, you don't love me because you let me know your whole heart. It made sense to him. He was like, oh my gosh, listen, you cut my hair off, I will be weakened. So this is crazy. And it made sense to him. Because she say, oh, I do love her, girl, I'm, I'm giving it to you. That's where his mind went to automatically. But why else did he tell her? So we have to learn, understand that the deceptive tactics of the adversary, he's going to come to you with the things that make sense, that seem good, that make sense to your flesh. He's going to do that. But we have to combat it with the word of Yah. Because guess what? The word of Yah makes sense to the spirit. And it is a revitalization to the spirit every time. Hence why you have Shabbat. You're fresh. The Most High is refreshing you. Don't be deceived by the adversary to do that first day worship. <laughs> then, and they try to make it make sense in the, in the catechism. You know, well, the Messiah was killed on the, you know, he rose on that day, so therefore we do it. It's written in the script. No. What did the Most High command us to do? It's yeah, a commandment. Tell it, tell it. Not because we wanted to change it because of tradition. Whoa. How is the perpetual command, commandment automatically changed because of tradition? That doesn't make any sense. That's yeah. deception in itself. Don't believe that. Deception is going. De if deception didn't make sense, it wouldn't really be deception. It'd be just, what? okay, that was stupid. Bye. But deception is supposed to make sense. That's how our people fall away because it's going to make sense to your ears. So mm -hmm. pay attention. Yes. Pay attention to what the uh, He's lurking for real. Don't act like he's not lurking. We know he's lurking. So we have to watch ourselves mm -hmm. and do not give in to the deceptive tactics of the adversary. 
truly be girded. Fast and pray. Do the praise and worship that you need to be doing. Do the word study. It's not written in the scripture. Study to show thyself approved so you can write the Bible. It's not written for no reason. The most I will reveal to you the mysteries, such as the deceptive tactics of the Arabs, because religion has blinded us. We were so deceived that we didn't even know that the, uh, the adversary, we thought the flesh was just arguing. We thought the flesh was just fornication. We thought that was the flesh, which it is. Don't get me wrong. But we didn't know that we got somebody behind, you know, on our shoulder talking. Talking real good. Even the cartoons they gave you, you know, got you got an angel right here and a little pitchfork devil right here. Mm -hmm. That do it. Guess what? A lot of people that get had those little things, they did the angel away. Why? Because the deception, the evilness makes sense. I should shoot dude. I should poke him. Why? Because it makes sense. And guess what? That's how the adversary gets you to tug on your heartstrings. Oh man, yeah, they was talking to me wrong. The deception is strong. We have to truly wake up. Stop being blinded by deception. Yes, yes. Because it's, it's not good for you. It's called the deceptive tactics of the adversary for a reason. The wiles of the adversary. The strategies of the adversary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why the Re book of Revelation calls him that old serpent. Why is he that old serpent? He old. Mm -hmm. He been here for a long time so we know, he quote unquote know exactly what he talking about when he come to your flesh. He know exactly why? Because he deceived the first woman. He know how to get you. He know how to get at you. So you better be on guard. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard thy heart with all diligence. Mm -hmm. I'll let y'all see it yourself. It says, Keep thy heart with all diligence. But the Hebrew word means shamar. Guard it. Or natsar. Guard, protect, maintain, obey, besiege, hidden, hidden thing, keep, monument, observe, preserve, subtle, or watcher. But maintain, guard it, keep it. Don't let nobody just don't let the adversary just poke at your heart. Don't let nobody just come in there. Yeah, yeah. Ecclesiastes or the book of Sirach tells us when you get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they can be deceitful too. Because who they working with? Who you really working for? Whose side are they really on? Right. Everybody is not your friend. That's my dad would always tell, he still tell me and my siblings, every smile is not a friendly face. Every closed eye is not sleeping. Every goodbye does not mean gone. That's true. And they could be deceiving you with these things. Oh, I'm your friend. But next thing you know, you're shot in the head dead. You met y'all a little too early. And you don't want that to happen to you. So you got to keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. So guard your heart. There are many people in the scriptures that were not guarding their heart. Samson did not guard his heart. Look what happened to him. That's detrimental. He had to die along with the people he killed. Because mm. he didn't guard it. That's, he, that shouldn't have been. Simply because he didn't guard his heart. That's, that should not be. David didn't guard his heart. But well, he repented. A couple of times David didn't guard his heart. He wrote, wrote that census. Guard your heart. Even the heath of pale. I don't know why he killed himself. It was foolish. It made sense to him because his counsel won't follow it. Hang himself. What? what? Repent. Turn away from the, your wicked ways. The most I don't want you to, the adversary make that make sense to you. Take yourself out because you can't turn around. That's a lie. Many people don't want to come open their mouth because they think they can't open their mouth because guess what? Your mind tells you, no, don't open. You can't be saved. That's a lie from, that's a lie from the adversary. Yeah, yeah. If the word is quick and active, it can burn the soul, it can change you. No matter who you are. Because Nebuchadnezzar changed up, didn't he? Cyrus did to his heart was turned. The book of Proverbs says you that the heart of a king is in the most high's hand. It turns whatever he, way it go, he wants it to. Yes. So don't think that you can't be changed. That's a lie. From, that's a lie. Don't believe that. You can be changed. You can repent. You can't shoot. Why do you think that most high is patient? Peter tells us in 1 Peter. First Peter chapter 3. Or two. Second Peter, excuse me. Second Peter three. It says, Yahuwah is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward or toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the adversary got you thinking you too, you too sick to be saved, your spirit too dirty to be saved. That's a lie. 
A woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years, ooh, that's a long time. She was saved. Hmm. So what make you think you any different? You're not. The most high is not a respect of persons. Yeah. It's not just the Israel. He created, he said, he's the Elohim of all flesh. Is anything too hard for him? No, he said he gave to every man, not just Yasharel, to every man, every Adam, humankind. He gave to every man a measure of faith. It's up to you what you do with your faith. Yes, yes. You can either give in to the adversary, give it to your heart, or you give it to the Most High and follow him for real and guard your heart. Walk by the Ruach HaKodesh yes. and have life. Stop being deceived by the adversary because of what he going to come with going to sound good. Forget that. You know it's going to sound good. We should be equipped now that we know it's going to sound good. So when you get back into a corner, fight back. Resist the devil and he will yeah. flee from you. Resist. How do you resist? With the word of Yah. You can't resist with your own words. Why? Why do I say that? Because I tried to resist with my own words and still gave in to pornography, still gave in to sex. And even if I tried to resist with my own words, so I have to come back with the word of the Most High because it's sharp and active and quick. It is. So we have to resist with the word of the Most High. Yes. And if you resist with the word of the Most High, I believe what he say when he say he's going to keep it. He's not a man that he should lie. He will give you his Ruach HaKodesh so you can be his son and push back the deceptive tactics of the adversary. Believe him when he says that. Don't listen to the adversary. Yes. There was one account in the book of Psalms with uh, David. His heart got to him. His mind got to him. It says, verse 1, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom Yahuwah imputes not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Verse 3 is what I want to get to. When I kept my silence, when I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my warring all the day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah. And we obviously see in verse 5, there is a change. He, I acknowledge my sin unto thee and my iniquity. I have, have not, not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions. He began to open his mouth because he was like, this is not right. Keep my mouth closed. Did you see how he was feeling? My bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long because he kept his mouth closed. His heart got to him too. And you're no different. But guess what he did? He opened his mouth. So you have the same opportunity. Open your mouth. Stop being deceived by the adversary because the most I can clean anybody. If he's the author of creation, he could do anything. Like an author of a book. They can edit anything they want to. So guess what the author of creation can do? Edit your life and fix you up how he wants you to be fixed up. Mold you into the person that he wants you to be. And stop giving into the deceitful tactics of the adversary. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe so. I'm going to pray. Abba, yeah, I thank you, dear Father. First and foremost, I just want to, you know, repent for my sins, dear Father. And I also I have to acknowledge that I have to be tried by these words as well, dear Father. So I pray that you give me the strength to fight back against the adversary and not give in to his tactics, even if it tries to make sense to my flesh. Help me to remember to combat him with your word. Hallelujah. And not only me, dear Father, those who, who hear for our listening, dear Father, in the living room, or on Facebook or YouTube later, dear Father, I pray that you allow them to be equipped too. Let them to do, help them to do their things that they need to do, because faith without works is dead. Help them to put in their work. Help them to study to show themselves approved so they can combat the adversary, because the adversary is fighting. He's not going to go down without a fight. But as the Messiah told us, take, take it back by violence. So help us to be violent as well with your word, dear Father. Help us to be equipped with the sword of the Spirit. And our shield of faith, O oh Yah. Help us to have our eyes open and peeled for the deceptive tactics of the adversary. Help us to not be deceived. Help us to take heed lest we be deceived. Help us to trust in you, O oh Yahuwah. Help us to listen to the words of our master, Yahusha HaMashiach. I thank you, Abba Yah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so be it. Amen. Hallelujah. Shalom.